And prior to this, I trained another guy called Richard Taylor. I took over the training of Richard Taylor. Now, Richard Taylor was an interesting young man. He was 23 in 1974. And uh, he was the only, in my opinion, he was the only man in the world who could have beaten Lassa Beeren in, in, in Montreal. And I know because I helped train Lassa Beeren and I helped train uh, Richard Taylor. And I was coaching, a, developing a coach down in you know, Otago, in Dunedin, Otago, New Zealand. His name was Alison McMurrin. Today he's a very good coach and he actually succeeded in Montreal with uh, uh, one of his athletes, uh, uh, Ewan Robinson, got sixth in the final of the Steeple Chase. And uh, so today he's a pretty competent man, but in those days he wasn't competent enough. And I had set all the training up for Richard Taylor and uh, I was monitoring, monitoring what they were doing. Now Richard Taylor actually developed what we call ankylosing spondylitis. It's an athletic complaint that he affects, he affects only fit young men, one in about every 20,000. And uh, I know two young men that have had this, and both fit young uh, men who have potentially very great. And uh, anyway, in the, in the course of his conditioning, Taylor had gone out and run the mouth in 2.15. He'd never raced a marathon before. He raced a mouth in 2.15, and that year he'd come out and run a mile in 3.57. So here we had a guy that could run a fast mouth and a, and a fast uh, mile. And he came out and ran his first ever 10K in 1970. Uh, 1974 and won the provincial title in uh, in uh, 2850. He came out and won the New Zealand 10K in 2820, uh, and he was improving rapidly. And uh, now he now he, he had to stop training. Something went wrong with his leg, and he stopped for about four or five weeks. And we had six weeks to go to the the Commonwealth Games. And the British Commonwealth Games, are the, next to the Olympics, are the biggest track and field meet in the world. Of 44 countries, and you've got the Kenyans and Tanzanians, all these guys in. David Bed David Bedford, who held the world record was the big star at those days, and he was from England in the race. And uh, Taylor, uh, we got him running again, and I took him to a school, because now, as prize giving in New Zealand is in uh, Christmas, we our schools closed off year, time of year to you, and I was presenting prize at a high school, and we went down to a, this track, and was, we used a grass track. They put a white line around the track, and uh, they could be anything from 350 metres to 400 metres, I, I, I wouldn't know. And so I said to Taylor, you better get up there and do those repetitions. Now, whenever you miss any training, if, you ever, if something goes wrong, you get a cough or a cold and you can't train, you've got to look at what you missed in your training. That's what you've got to do. Yeah. Because it's like baking a cake. If there's an ingredient missing, it's not going to taste too good. Same in training. You've got to, you can't coordinate something you don't have. So you look and see what you lost, and you try and mix the training and balance it in. And this is what we had to do with Taylor. And they actually missed out the hard anaerobic work. And normally I would never give anyone hard anaerobic work six weeks to go, but we had to do it. So we put him on the track and I said, run fast, my jogger, run my jogger. Okay, so what actually happened was, the kids were standing there and they were watching this. It was T.O. Moody College, by the way. And uh, they had the kids were watching there. And they said, what's he going to do? And I told them. They said, well, what time is he going to run them? And I said, I don't know. I'm not going to time them. They said, how many is he going to do? I said, I'm not going to count them. And I said, how far is the track around? And the kids looked at me and thought, what a gigo this is to be training the New Zealand uh, team for the Olympic with the Commonwealth Games. See? So when Taylor came in, they said to him, uh, how many did you run? He said, I never counted them. And they said, well, what time did you run them? Run them? And he said, I never timed them. You see? Uh, because it was, he had to go by his reaction. I just want to explode this myth that you people have about getting that watch and going out there and someone can tell you exactly what you should do in anaerobic training. Because it's a lot of eyewash. We believe me. So interval training is a lot of eyewash. Okay, so don't believe it. It looks good, but it's a lot of eyewash. Okay, Taylor went out and won the Commonwealth Games 10K. Uh, he won it in 27, 27.43. Won it very easily. Just wiped the field out when he was ready, because I always make my athletes stay back till halfway. When you're halfway, keep out of trouble. Yeah, just sit back and within a striking distance. He st stayed back and watched the Tanzanians and the, the Kenyans tripping up the English. And now yeah, they run all up the front there and they bat the front and they're on the back and they... David Bedford said, if they do that to me in the 5,000 meters, I'll, st I'll drop them on the track and all that. But Taylor stood back and watched them, just took them when he was ready. We never really saw how good he could be. Came over here, ran two races indoors, beat all the, all the best runners you had over here and that they bought over from overseas. Went home and he couldn't walk. He was in the hospital for three months. Uh, and uh, then they realized what it was. Uh, he could never, we could never train him again. But we got him out. Uh, he, he'll come and jog in a marathon. He'll jog a marathon at 240 with his friends, that's all. Uh, yeah, his potential is so great. Uh, but here, here was the, this great athlete. But he's making a, using it to make a point because uh, there's too many people uh, too concerned with that watch out on that track and realize uh, you can't do it. No one can do it. I don't, not even each German physiologist would try to say exactly what to do. You can advise, and, uh, but as long as you understand the physiological reasons for the training and make yourself tired with speed and volume, you're going to get the desired results. Okay, now we keep doing this hard anaerobic work. You've got to understand that you, you've got to do this overload work and do it for four weeks to five weeks. 
It's better to underdo a hard anaerobic training than to overdo it. Uh, and uh, if we understand the principle of it, you've got to pull the pH level of blood down, and then you must let it get back to normal again. You, want, you must get it back to normal again before you pull it down again. Now, if you, if you do hard anaerobic training, and you get the pH level of blood down and keep it down by not allowing for full recovery, you're going to un undermine your health, and you're going to d destroy the, your potential development. Uh, the reasons being that, uh, you know, vitamins only function in our pH range, and uh, you're not going to get the value from your food. Uh, if you, we know that uh, enzyme, some enzyme functions are affected by a low pH level of blood being main, maintained down low, uh, so your recovery rate can be retarded, and other metabolic actions and reactions in your body can be affected. We know your blood platelets get very low, your immune system's affected. Uh, in your country about a decade or so ago, you had a lot of runners like even Jim Ryan who got myonucleosis. Uh, these people are continually breaking down with muscle pulls and things like this. You're starting to see it with Sebastian Coe. Uh, where they'd be trying to emphasize more speed, more speed, more speed. And the guy's got pressure on him. He's racing too much. He's doing too much speed work. He's not doing what he was doing when he built himself up. And he's getting a continuity of breakdown. When they turn around and say he's got uh, glandular fever twice in six months, I don't believe it. it has to, there has to be a reason for it. Uh, so we know that, and I'm always telling people this, these, these people get on that track doing interval training and speed work continually. That guy out on the road that walks down there, smokes and drinks, doesn't exercise, probably has a better immune system, that kid down that track. Let's understand that. That's exactly actually so. And doctors can tell you this. So you're playing with dynamite when you're playing with anaerobic training. And if we give you excessive anaerobic training, realize something, you're going to get burned out.